Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and I think you guys know why I'm making this video, right? So recently, our fastest distance runner in Singapore, Sora Yong, has challenged the whole country to a sub 7 minute 2.4 km run. And the winner will get a whole list of items sponsored by many, many companies and people. By the way, the race is 9th to 10th October, so you got a little bit of time to train for it if you really decide to challenge him. Even though this bit is about how to run a sub 7, that doesn't mean that you should follow exactly what he does and also he's been running for years and years to be able to do this training so don't get a misconception that anyone can follow what he does and sub 7 minutes within 2 months and I know I definitely cannot do 7 minutes so this video is actually what I've learned from looking at his Strava data and also keep in mind that Strava data does not show everything that the athlete has done only their workouts so it will be missing their drills, strength training, uh, technique work and stuff like that which would help them become faster so let's see what Ryong did 2 months before he did his sub 7 minute 2.4 Alright, so before looking at any running plan, you should know like what their fitness is at. So actually for running, we have this thing called the V dot chart. So the V dot chart over here is like your running level. So the higher the number on the left, that means your level of running is higher. Something like that. If we take Ray Yong's 5k time, for example, I think he's like a 1440 to 1450, which is here. Uh, we have him at a V dot of 71, which is, yeah, which is super high. For me, my 5k is around there, so my V dot is 57. So with this 71, right, we can look at his training paces, which is uh, another chart over here. Looking at this row, we can see the important paces for him is 312 pace for lactic threshold runs. Uh, 257 for interval runs or 64 seconds for repetition runs okay so back to the chart here so he did his 6 minute 53 second 2.4 two Saturday days ago so the races he did are in red which is this 2.4 run this 5k run and his 1.5k run so over here we have the type of week uh, if you're not a runner the type of week is like the purpose of the week so two months before his race here he actually had uh, two other races, that's why the type of week was a taper week for him. After that, uh, it was his. It was three weeks of base building. Like I could tell that this was probably a base building phase because Ryong didn't have VO2 max sessions on Monday. And also a giveaway that it's a base week is because his mileage is increasing. So after the base week, we have his rest week, uh, which is about 60% of his highest mileage week. So that's why you see a drop in his mileage here. Then after that, he has two weeks of build and then taper for his race on the Saturday. We can see on the right his mileage for the past two months. It ranges from 85k to a maximum of 123k a week. So that's basically running almost every day and even 80k on his rest week. So let's get into the details of his actual workouts. Okay, so in a good running plan, right? you should have 80% of your mileage being easy and up to 20% of it being intervals. So this E over here, right, all these E's means easy runs. So for him, that's probably 430 pace or slower. So we have our easy, 11K easy, oops, 11K easy, 21K easy, 10K easy. So five out of the seven days is easy for him. And he only works out on Mondays, all these workouts here and Thursdays. And then we can see his long runs are all on a Saturday, 21, 21, 20, 21, 18. So even in a elite type of program, they are still sticking to the main three workouts, which is a long run, a lactic threshold run, or a speed workout. So let's see what he does on his two interval sessions a week. So I'm guessing the reason why he didn't do uh, any intervals here, because he's probably resting from his uh, 5k attempt. Let's move on to the next week. We can see that he did a 25, times 200 meter a repetition workout at 240 pace and with a 60 second rest so as you can see he did the exact the same workout and the exact same rest for three weeks in a row moving on to his thursday which is his lactic threshold day he did 16 times 1 km on his first base week uh, at 310 pace the next week he did 12 times 1.2k at 310 pace so that's exactly the same pace for all three weeks including the last week 10 times 1.4k at 310 pace. Also, we can see that the total distance of his lactic threshold set is 16k, over here is 14.4k and 14k. During his build phase over here, he did 12.8k, uh, 14k and 14.4k. So we can see that the total 
length of his lactic threshold set range from 12k to 16k, which is pretty amazing actually. Okay, let's move on to his build phase, which is his VO2 max and repetition workouts. He does a 10 times 500 VO2 max pace, which is 240 pace and 51 second rest, um, and then 300 meter repeats at 240 pace. And then he does a similar workout for all three weeks, including the taper week. So this is pretty interesting. We can see that he does five times 300 here, then six times 300 here and then another 6 times 300 here. So we can see that from week to week, his workouts don't really change that much. In fact, it only changed by one or two reps. On his table week, we can see that he does 50 minutes easy, 30 minutes easy. And on Thursday, which is normally his like 12 to 14K lactic threshold run, he cuts that in half to about 6.4K, which is typically what we want to do during our table week. We want to cut the intervals in half, but make it the same pace. As you can see, this is 305, it's not far from 309 pace. The day before the race, he did 20 minutes easy and rest up for the Saturday, which is his race. So that's a look into his training two months before his sub 7 minute 2.4. And I'm not sure if you realize, after his sub 7 minute 2.4, the next day he ran a 21k half marathon again. That's probably his recovery 21k. <laughs> wow. Alright, so a quick summary of the takeaways. 3 key runs a week, 1 long run, 1 lactic travel run, and 1 VO2 or repetition run. 2nd point, 3 weeks hard and 1 week rest cycle. 3rd point, uh, your workouts should barely change from week to week. 4th point, stick to the suggested V dot training paces. And lastly, your taper week means cut your intervals in half. Alright, so I'm really curious if anyone wants to take part in his challenge. If you want to try, please let me know in the comment section below. Anyway, I hope this video inspired you knowing how an elite runner in Singapore trains like. And if you want to follow him, his runs are publicly available on Strava. So I'll help him by linking his Strava account below and you can go follow that too. And remember, the workouts itself is just one part of training and there's many more other things to do to get faster. To those who want to challenge Ryong, I really wish you guys all the best. And I think he also can't wait to find out who actually wants to try it. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys again in the next video. Goodbye.